Hey everyone. At this point, the Carrick's been out long enough for us to be able to identify what flyable ships other than the Pisces are capable of fitting into the scout bay. So far, this list includes the Merlin, the Archimedes, the Argo MPUV cargo, and the MPUV personnel, the 85X, the Aurora, the Razor, the M50, the Buccaneer, and the Arrow. And I'm going to follow up with my usual disclaimer that these are the ships that can comfortably fit into the scout bay, which means that the ship's landing gear can make full contact with the landing pad's floor and that you can close the bay doors behind it. The arrow is the only exception to this, but I'll go into more detail about that later on. In this video, I'm going to be matching these ships up against the Pisces and talking about how using each one of them can greatly alter what your gameplay options are for the Carrick. The Pisces C8X Expedition variant is going to be the measuring stick that I'm going to be using to compare all these other vessels up against. This version of the Pisces has four size 1 weapons hardpoints. It has room for a pilot and two passengers, and can carry four SEUs worth of cargo, and it has a quantum drive. First on the list of ships that I'm going to be comparing the Pisces with is the Argo MPUV. More specifically, I'm going to start by taking a look at the Argo Cargo. This ship has no weapons, it doesn't have a quantum or a jump drive, it can only transport two people including the pilot, and can only carry two SEUs worth of cargo. Now, I went back and double checked what its cargo capacity was just to make sure that this information was still accurate. And it is, and I also verified it in-game. So with all these factors, it seems hardly worth replacing the Pisces with. Even the C8 Pisces that comes with the Carrick by default is an all-around better choice to use for, well, basically everything. The only situation that I can think of where you'd want to be carrying an Argo cargo instead of the Pisces was if you were delivering it to some location that it couldn't otherwise get to on its own. And this would be an interesting type of mission for ships like the Carrick to undertake, which in essence isn't any different from delivering a box with the exception that this would require you to have a lot more carrying space and it would end up earning you a lot more money per run. Next you have the MPUV personnel that can carry 9 people including the pilot. That's three times what the maximum occupancy of the Pisces is. But it still doesn't have any weapons, a quantum or a jump drive, and it doesn't have any cargo storage. However, I did think of a scenario where its superior passenger carrying capacity would come in handy and where none of its other detriments would matter. In this scenario, you'd be using the Carrick as a deep space search and rescue ship. It's going to be a good idea to keep the Carrick poised at a minimum safe distance away from the injured vessel, just in case some of its subsystems ended up going critical like its engines or its power supply. Once the ship is in position, the Argos could be sent in to pick up as many people as they could carry. Each one could transport up to 8 people at a time, and since the Carrick can carry 2 Argos in the scout bay at once, that means you could potentially rescue up to 16 people in the same amount of time that it would take the Pisces to transport just 2 of them. The Argos would also provide you with a place to keep each person secure while you quantum travel away from the spent wreckage. The Argo may not have any quantum capabilities, but it does have 8 jump seats that you can use to secure passengers in. So even though the Carrick might not have enough room to seat all these people, the two Argos will. Not having a quantum or a jump drive isn't going to matter since they're not going to be traveling short distances. And their lack of weaponry isn't going to matter either because its function is to provide humanitarian aid and not cover fire. Another plus to being unarmed is that it may make the MPUV seem less intimidating to survivors who would be more likely to trust their intentions because of it. This method of using the MPUVs and the Carrick in conjunction with one another could end up being the most economic way to conduct a deep space search and rescue operation on a large scale that only requires two pilots and two small craft to do all the legwork. There's also another Argo variant that's going to be coming out sometime in the future called the MPUV-1S. This version replaces the utility pod with a dedicated search and rescue container that's going to be outfitted with medical equipment. Just think about the advantages that something like that could bring to a battlefield. This variant hasn't been brought to concept yet, but when it does, I could imagine that it would most likely hold a single low-tier medical bed inside of it. If that were the case, you could use it as a mobile spawn point just like the Cutlass Red. And since, once again, the Carrick can hold two of them, it could be used to transport and deposit a pair of MPUV-1Ss throughout a battlefield, which would give any advancing or defending army a huge advantage. The next two ships that I'm going to be talking about are the Merlin and the Archimedes. Neither one of these ships have the ability to quantum travel and they don't have any storage space, but their firepower is comparable to the Pisces. They also have better handling and are a lot harder to hit than the Pisces is. But the real advantages for these ships is that you can fit two Krugers into the hangar bay and an additional two more into the rover bay. Three actually if you're careful about how you do it. And then on top of that you have to include however many more are going to be able to be placed into the Carrick's cargo pods, which at a minimum would end up being one per pod. But after looking over the space, I'd say it's a lot more likely that you'd be able to get at least two ships into each pod, maybe even three. Either way, the total amount of Krugers that the Carrick could carry at one time is going to be more than you could fit into the Krakapillar. And for anyone who doesn't know what that is, the Krakapillar is when you put one Kruger into each of the four cargo bays of the Caterpillar so that you can use it as a pocket carrier. 
Doing the same thing for the Karak would also end up turning it into a formidable mini-carrier, which some people are already calling the Kraken. And I dare you to try and say that and not sound Scottish. I can already imagine the hangar bay, rover bay, and cargo pods all opening up at once and having a swarm of Krugers spilling out of them. And don't forget that you're also going to have the Karak's four turrets on top of that to back them up. Next is the 85X. 85X is very similar to the Pisces in a lot of ways. If you place them both side by side, you'll see that they basically have the same dimensions. So this ship is going to fit just as easily into the Scout Bay as the Pisces does. The downside to the 85X is that it doesn't have any space for cargo and it can only carry two people instead of the three like the Pisces does. But it does have a number of advantages over the Pisces. For instance, the Pisces comes with two gimbaled weapons and two fixed weapons while the 85X is equipped with a fully gimbaled weapons loadout by default. The 85X has a quantum drive just like the Pisces, but it also comes with a jump drive, which the Pisces doesn't come with. Now, just to be clear, the Pisces does have the room for you to be able to outfit it with a jump drive, but that doesn't change the fact that it doesn't come with one by default. And just for FYI, a jump drive is different from your quantum drive, and a lot of people get those two mixed up. A quantum drive allows you to travel at nearly the speed of light, while well, a jump drive lets you travel through the gates that connect two systems to one another. So by default, the 85X is going to come with better components and weapon options. The 85X also comes with a signature origin bubble canopy and tandem style seating arrangement. This means that both the pilot and the passenger can enjoy the same unobscured forward facing view of the surrounding area. This makes the 85X a more enjoyable experience for traveling and sightseeing. Which, let's face it, at one point or another is going to be all you're going to want to be doing when you visit a new location. If I was going to pick someone up or transport someone down to a landing zone and I really wanted to show off the beauty that this game had to offer, then I'd prefer using the 85X over the Pisces to do it. In the end, this snubcraft is another example of something that gives up versatility for something else. In this case, it's having a better default components and weapons loadout and provides a better casual gameplay experience. The Razor is another really good alternative to using the Pisces. It's fast, it's extremely maneuverable, has a pair of size 1 missiles, has two size 2 weapons hardpoints, and it has a quantum drive and a jump drive. Like so many other ships on this list, it sacrifices the utilitarian aspects of the Pisces in exchange for something else. In this case, it's being faster and more nimble. So that means that it has no cargo hauling abilities and it can only seat one person. But in terms of strictly being a scout, it could prove to be a lot more effective than the Pisces, especially if you're using the EX variant, which by default comes decked out for stealth. Being less visible and extremely fast are going to be two very good qualities to have for a scout ship. The Razor is also going to be the perfect ship to use if all you're interested in is having the freedom to break away from the Carrick to go visit an LZ while the Mothercraft goes off to do other things. The Razor is really responsive and enjoyable to fly, and you can practically land it anywhere since it's one of the smallest non-snubcraft vessels in the game. And once you're done, you can fly back and rejoin the group at your convenience. The M50 is very similar to the Razor in almost every way. It's been given a recent buff to its weapons capabilities, so now it has two size 2 weapons hardpoints just like the Razor, and it also has a pair of size 1 missiles. So when it comes to firepower, they're identical now. The only real difference is that the M50 has a slightly faster top speed while the Razor is more maneuverable. They're also practically the same size, so it fits just as easily into the Scout's Bay as the Razor does. They really fulfill the same role, so the main thing that it comes down to is which one of these two ships do you prefer more? But in the end, they're going to be equally as good a choice to pick as either a Scout or a personal transport vessel. There is another level of synergy that can exist between the Carrick and these two ships, and it's for the people who want to pursue racing as a career path. They could use the Carrick as a transport to take these ships to whatever track they wanted to go race on. The Carrick is long range and efficient, it's got strong shields for protection, and enough guns to ward off would be attackers. It's also going to save on a lot of the wear and tear that the racers would otherwise build up if they were used to make the journey themselves. Now I'm going to move on and talk about the Aurora next. This had to be one of the most unexpected finds to come across, and I was really happy to know that the Aurora and all of its variants can fit into the Scout Bay. This includes the LN, which has a size 4 missile rack installed on its roof. If you're going to use any of the Auroras in place of the Pisces, then I'd recommend using the LN. You can carry the same cargo box as the CL, which would give it a total cargo capacity of 6 SCUs. It has 4 weapons mounts, two of which are size 1s and another pair that are size 2s. It has a size 4 missile rack, which gives you more options to choose from. 
It also has one other advantage that none of the other alternative runabouts have, and it's that the Aurora's bed allows you to add one more permanent addition to your total crew capacity. It's almost a complete upgrade from the Pisces in every way, with the only exception being that it sacrifices being able to carry two extra people for having a bed. But it can potentially carry more cargo, it has more missiles, it can be used to log out of the game from, and it has a larger weapons loadout. There's one last thing to consider for people who have chosen the Aurora as their starter craft. For a long time, the starter ships have been looked at as a throwaway vessel, a thing to be tossed aside as soon as you get the funds to trade up to something better. And it's good to know that this doesn't have to be the case, especially if you choose an Aurora and ever plan on eventually getting a Carrick. Instead of throwing your Aurora on the scrap heap just because you've worked your way up to using a bigger and better ship, you can instead keep it and at some point down the line, you can use it as an alternative scout ship for your Carrick. I really like this idea and I hope that more synergies between smaller and larger ships continue to emerge like this in the future. The second to last option that I'll be talking about is the Buccaneer. Both the Buccaneer and the Arrow represent choices that aren't going to be good for personnel or cargo transportation, but they're going to be a lot more proficient than the Pisces is as a combat ship. Being able to stow the Buccaneer in the Carrick is most likely what Bob Ross would have referred to as a happy accident. You have to angle it in when you're landing to make it fit into the scout bay, but it still fits. You can even drop its landing gear and close the hangar bay doors behind it. The best thing about the Buccaneer is that it's fast, it has a lot of firepower, and it has a very small profile for enemies to try and hit. It can dish out nearly the same amount of DPS as the Super Hornet, and it travels faster in a straight line than the Sabre does. The downside to it is that it's got the Drake Curse which means that once you punch through its shields, it's not going to last very long. But it's great if you're planning on using it as a scout ship. Its original focus is to act as an interceptor, that's why it's so good at running down other ships. But you can repurpose that ability for scouting and use it to escape from any enemies that end up catching you on the periphery of their radar. You can also use that ability to quickly close the distance between you and your destination so you can spend more of your time scouting out new areas and less time trying to get to them. If you don't care about hauling goods or people, and are more interested in offensive capabilities, then this is one of the best alternatives to use instead of the Pisces. The last ship on this list is the Arrow. The Arrow is going to be the ship for people who are more interested in having better offensive capabilities than utilitarian options. I think that the Buccaneer is a better choice for a scout slash fighter hybrid, but the Arrow is a better overall craft when it comes to fighting. Plus it does equally as good a job when it comes into stepping into the role of a scout or as a personal escort ship. My first attempt at getting the arrow into the Carrick Scout Bay was a failure, and a very disappointing failure at that. Mainly because this ship fits inside of it with regards to its length and width, but the folded up wings stick out too much for you to be able to get the bay doors closed. I learned later on that by not lowering the landing gear you can park it flat against the ground which gives you enough clearance to get it into the hangar bay and be able to close the doors behind it. I tried this and it worked. I even took it into Quantum and out again without issues. It bounced around a little bit, but it didn't take any damage, and more importantly, it didn't do any internal damage to the Carrick. There is unfortunately one problem with this setup. If you log out or stow the ship and then call it again, the arrow will appear in the hangar with its gear out and its wings clipping into the hangar doors. When you open the doors, the arrow will be dragged into the ship as if it were being sucked into it, and it will eventually get fatally stuck or even explode. We're eventually supposed to have independent control of the landing gear and the wings, so if that was the case, you could lower the landing gear and not fold up the wings when you land. And this would solve all of its problems. Unfortunately, this is a feature that's been talked about going back to the early 2.6 days. And I really look forward to this feature eventually becoming a reality, but in the meantime, we can still haul the arrow around in the Carrick, but it's not going to be able to persist between gameplay sessions. And for a ship like the Carrick that's supposed to be able to remain out in the wild for extended periods of time, this will eventually become a problem. But all these issues aside, the Arrow is one of my favorite single pilot ships and continues to remain so even after its last nerfing. It fits my playstyle like a glove and I've racked up more kills with this ship than any other so far. It's my preferred vessel to use for protection, scouting, or as a personal transport. So these are going to be your options when it comes to alternative ships you can use instead of the Pisces. If you're planning on setting up a deep space search and rescue operation, I'd look into purchasing a couple of MPUVs that have the personnel pod attachment. They're relatively inexpensive to acquire in-game, and they're going to maximize your ability to save lives in one of the most efficient ways possible. If you want to turn your Carrick into a pocket carrier and be able to deliver a mini fleet of snubcraft to anywhere that you want, then I'd go with the Krugers. If you're more interested in impressing people by being able to transport someone in style, or even if you just want to do a little sightseeing and have the ability to bring along a friend to enjoy the experience with, then I go with the 85X. 
The Aurora is something that does a good job of complementing the Carrick's inherent versatility, and it's practically an upgrade to the Pisces in nearly every way. Plus it can up your total crew size by one more person. If you're just looking for pure scouting ability, then the Razor and the M50 are going to be two really good alternative options to choose from. And if you want to have a ship that falls somewhere down the middle when it comes to combat ability and scouting, then I go with the Buccaneer. And lastly, if you're looking for the best option when it comes to offensive capabilities, then I choose the Arrow. That is, if you can suffer through the temporary inconvenience of having to unload and store it separately from the Carrick at the end of every one of your gameplay sessions. At least, for now. That's going to be it for this look at the various alternative options that the Carrick has to the Pisces and how they're going to affect your gameplay. Thanks everyone for watching, and take care.